So we have him covered on the bubble. I can just shove any two cards. And I think against him I'm going to do that. Because if I do anything else, he might just call and try and see a flop. So I want to just get my easy equity now and just push all in. That's a horrendous call. But, yep. Good job, buddy. You win. That's not a call, guys. On the bubble? Against the chip leader? Pretty bad. But, whatever. I think he folds there like 92% of his hands. So, definitely pushing all in is profitable. like to know what you think is best once the blinds get higher. Shoving or win raise and never folding to induce worse shoves. Just shoving is better. It depends on stack sizes, Yabby Ayo, though. If, you, if you're talking 10 big blinds, you can um, just min raise sometimes. So we're getting really good odds, suited hand, let's just call. Now we have to be very tight because we lost that against the Ace Queen, but whatever. The correct play in his position is just to fold Ace Queen, but he, he obviously doesn't know that, that's fine. He did have a very good hand, so good on him. At $1.50 level. Just, just push all in, yeah, B.A.O. I'm basically not continuing without two pair or better. Or a five. Do I even bother with the 5-6? Nah. Could be very tight against the chip leader. So unnecessary. Um, what do you mean, man? <laughs> it's it's plus EV. It's okay to fold once in a while. Wow. Um, no, J Corp. No. No. Um, yeah, I, I recommend you reading in the description about ICM because that push there is very profitable, very winning. If you fold, you're making a clear mistake. So, yep. Yeah. Sorry, bro. You're just wrong. What's up, baby pothead? How you doing? I think with Ace-3, I can ISO this half a big blind guy. So if you guys are new to sit and goes, and you think some of my players are bad, uh, just make sure you check down below in my description. You can read up about ICM, you can read up. Uh, I've got videos on YouTube that explain some things more in depth. You can ask me questions as well. But definitely that shove with Queen 2 suited is very, very winning, very plus EV. And in my opinion, doing anything else would lose you value. So we got this guy all in against the min race. We're just going to shove because even if he calls the short sack has to win against both of us for us to uh, to bubble and the big sack has to beat me so it's just very unlikely and eight is a good hand yep, so we probably come third here yep third place um, it's all right again eights against ace king it's just a flip I'm gonna go quickly um, what's this? Pocket trace? I'm just going to go uh, turn the dry on again. It stopped. After I call my ace king. I'm not even going to sweat it. Maybe I should though. The next hand I'll be under the gun. Good luck. Starbuck.
I also don't understand how saying Ace Queen is a bad call. I understand he's on the ball, but he's just, but he's low stack with Ace Queen. I don't see how he's folding Ace Queen there. Um, J Corp, it's just a simple mathematical calculation. So down below in my description, there's some ICM calculators, and if you put in that hand in an ICM calculator, the the percent chance of him winning with Ace Queen against my range of 100% is not high enough for him to make money in the long run, because too often. Ace Queen is just going to lose against my two random hands, and he's going to bubble when there's two players who are shorter than him. So that's that's the the reasoning why um, Ace Queen is not a call. If you guys are unsure about that, I can show you the calculation. Right, all right, I'll show you guys. I'll prove it. We'll, we'll make this the last game. Um, for uh, I'll just one table this. Then after I finish this, I'll show you. Because you're all very interested about that hand, so I'll prove it to you. Why the ace queen is bad and why I can shop any two cards. Oh, this is um the emote. <laughs> yeah, you got the right idea. Um, got the right idea, pocket trays. Okay, so let's just one table this, because then after this, I'll show you guys an ICM calculation on that ace, uh, queen two versus ace queen hand. Chip leader with threes. Nah, not threes and under in first position would we'll just fold it. So I can't do the ICM calculation as the same time at the same time um, as having poker stars open. So I have to wait for this tournament to finish. I'll be right back. Just gonna turn the dry on. So I'm very excited to show you guys because you can learn something um, after this game. Glad you like the channel, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you guys the calculation. I'll, I'll show you. Like, let's just put in... I can do a random equity calculation just to give you guys an idea. Because I can do this while Pokestars is open. Of Ace-Queen versus 100%, how much equity you have. Okay. Look. Ace Queen against 100%, he only has 64%. So 35.56, he 56, he loses and is busted when his stack at the moment is in comfortable second place and is two guys shorter. So 35% of the time he's risking his whole tournament against anything I have. 35%. So he only wins Ace Queen 64.44, right? Now you have to you have to think, is that sixty four percent to win and doubling up? The bubble's still going. Yes, he'll be the chip leader, but is that worth risking losing and getting no money thirty five percent of the time? I can prove you can prove that it's mathematical. So I'll show that to you the exact calculation, but it's proven. It's solved. It's easy to solve and it's not going to be profitable to make that call in the long run. Um, in that spot, I actually believe Ace-King might even be a fold as well. Um, in my opinion, like, I've done enough of those to know that Aces is probably a call, Kings is probably a call, um, Jacks would be close, Queens, I think that's okay, but Tens, I believe, is a fold as well. So, like, I don't think you can call there with an unpaired hand.
That means he's winning 67. Yeah, you, you're really um, misunderstanding Sidengo's J Corp 1. You're really mis- This is not a multi-table tournament. Um, Sidengo's... You know, if you if you bubble, it's really bad. You know, you want to make that money. And he has a very, very good chance of making the money because he's in second place and there's two guys that are shorter than him. So he has to play very tight mathematically. Who cares if he can be the chip leader 60% of the time? It means nothing. The bubble's still going to go on. That 35%, when he goes from a comfortable second place to making no money, is very, very bad for him. No, I'm, I'm not expecting him to understand that Ace-Queen is a fold. I'm just saying that just because he called Ace-Queen doesn't mean my shove is bad. No, average players aren't calling me with garbage, for sure. An average player is going to fold Ace-8. He's going to fold um, Ace-2. They're not going to fold Ace-Queen, no. But um, that doesn't matter, because he's only calling maybe like Ace-10 or better, pocket 8s or better. What's that? 10%, 8%, 92% of the time I just win. Now the other option is to min raise or limp. And against him, I don't think that's better because he's the type of player that's going to call anyway and see a flop. He's not going to play tight. And once he sees a flop, he's going to be less likely to give it up because he, ha he has a pair or a draw. So against him, shoving all in is definitely profitable and I believe it's the best play. They make incorrect players. Yes, I mean, I agree with you, Jacob. They do. But just because he calls a few more hands than he should doesn't mean I should stop pushing 100%. It's still going to be profitable to push 100% and I can actually prove that to you as well. I can show you how loose he's going to um, have to call to make my 100% push bad. Cool, I like the discussion for sure. You just have to make good plus EV plays. You know, you're not just thinking about min caching all the time, but like every single decision you make has to be a winning dollar EV decision. And in Sid and Goes, that often means folding Ace King on the bubble. And Ace Queen on the bubble. No, no, we're discussing a hand, JS, that I will show. Uh, i got to get my hand history. Where's my damn hand history? I'll find the hand history and I'll show you guys the hand while we're waiting. Okay, it's from the last game. Is this the game? not the game. I lost with eights. This is it. Okay. Here we go. Uh, I would have called the King Queen against just one player, but... I bluff heaps is deciding to call as well, so now it's a fold. Okay, so I'll show you guys the hand. Okay. This is the hand. It's a nine man turbo knockout structure. Knockout structure, which makes it even worse, guys. It's even worse in a knockout to call the Ace Queen than it is in a normal turbo. Because by calling and losing, he also loses future bounty potential against the short stacks. So it's even worse in a knockout. But even if it was not a knockout, um, it's still bad. I'm going to prove it to you. Okay. Oh. Keep getting hands, so I wanted to show you guys the hand. Uh, 
That's exactly right, Yabio. Um, and that's what happens. ICM, it just mathematically calculates something that people do anyway. People are tighter on the bubble when they're not the short stack, and that's just um, ICM mathematically calculating that, you know, that natural tendency of humans. So we raise calling eights definitely against uh, tr 17 big blinds. We're, um, yeah, eight ball. Oh well. We're calling range in big blind versus bottom two blind jam be different at different stack depths. Well, you just said it's 10 big blinds, Jimmy Crackers. Do you mean different if we had different stacks? Slightly. But you're mainly concerned with effective stack. But let's say that if you call with 15, your, the 10 big blinds affects you a lot if you lose. But if, if you have 40 big blinds or 50 big blinds and you call his 10 big blind stack, it doesn't affect you as much. So you can call slightly looser, but it's more just what is his range and what is um, his his stack size or your effective stack size. So here's the hand, right? Bubble, turbo, nine man, knockout. I'm chip leader by two times. This guy's second place. Look at his stack. This guy's he has six big blinds, and this guy has seven. This is a fucking atrocious call, um, but that's fine, like, whatever. We just shovel in because it's profitable, I can guarantee you that, and the only hands he can call are aces, kings, and queens, and maybe jacks, but I don't really care, even if he calls me with ace, king, ace, queen, ace, ace, ten, because it's still going to be, he's going to be tight enough for me to push here profitably. Um, so he snaps the ace queen. That's the, this is the situation. Bubble of a turbo knockout nine man. Like I said, it's even worse in a in a knockout because by calling and losing, he loses future bounty potential. So like, I actually think that may, means that Jax might be a fold here, where Jax could be a fold, uh, could be a call in um, in a non knockout structure. So I'll, get, I'll do the actual ICM calculation to prove it to you guys. If I had 30 bigs, I think Jimmy Crackers, it's more, like I said, just his range. But if you have a close decision, you get, you're more likely to call when you have a bigger stack, basically. But you're, the, the majority factor, deciding factor in your decision is his range and his stack size. If the guy knows you're pushing any two, is ace queen still a bad call? Yes. JS1A, yes. I can tell him with a lie detector, I'm pushing any two cards and he has to fold ace queen. Because like I said before, you put in ace queen in an equity calculator, he's not going to win ace queen against 100% often enough to make that good in the long run. In fact, the only way that he can call is if I turn over my cards and he sees that he dominates me. So if he sees that I have the queen two and I turn them over, he can call. But if I turn over three two offsuit and he has ace queen, he cannot call. That's how good it is. It, if I have live cards, he's fucked. So that's why you can't really call unpaired hands in that spot. The only way is if he knows he's, dom he's dominating me. Then I only have like, then he's going to win 85 or 80% of the time, and it might just be good enough uh, to call. But come on. <laughs> How does he know that he's dominating me? That's, that's why like aces and kings and queens can be calls, because he just dominates a lot of my range. But unpaired hands, two live cards is good enough. I mean, that's basically what I just said, uh, streamer82. If you push 100%, he could call 10s plus. Like, I said jacks plus, but I'll do it over on my end as well, just to show everyone else. But like I said, ace-queens are fold, ace-kings are fold. Just playing his cards. It doesn't matter. 
because he's still he's still going to be very tight. So I still shove any two cards, even if I know he's not going to play correctly. It's still correct for me. Oh, nice, Benji! Congratulations on the gold star. We're one tabling this, guys, and then I'm going to quickly show you the ICM calculation for this hand. So again, if you guys want to do it yourself while, while we're waiting, you can. Here's the stack sizes, okay? It's a turbo knockout, nine-man structure, bubble. This guy has, there's antis already in there, so 1206, 1415, I have 7170, and the big blind has 3309. Take a screenshot, guys. So if you want to do this yourself, you can. Take a screenshot. Screenshot, screenshot. All right, done. What is the big blind core range when I push all in with 100% of my hands? Is this a shove? In a 45 man? 13 big blinds. Man, I... Ugh, I think it's just a fold. A little too deep. Hands a little too bad. Person 1, 1,000, me 1,000, and third person have 7k. Chip leader min raises all the time. What cards do I go all in? Is it the bubble? Uh, Mechanic Kern? It's kind of... That's a very broad question. You need to give me more information. What position are you in? Uh, what's the blind level? Is it the bubble? I need answers to those questions. Nope, that's incorrect, H2 Wells. Bounty equity makes no difference because if he loses, he's out of the 20 either way. That's incorrect. That's incorrect because he has future bounty equity over the short stacks. So by folding, his bounty he preserves his bounty equity. If he calls and loses, he, ha he no longer has an opportunity to win bounties off the short stacks. So that is incorrect. And that is an incorrect assumption in bounties. So hopefully that theory improves your bounty game because... That's really important. You do not want to take big risks as mid stacks in bounty tournaments because that future value against short stacks is a thing. It's it's in the calculation. So that's not true. Yep, that's pretty much what I said. 8th Queen is massively minus EV and 10s are slightly positive. So in a knockout, 10s is definitely minus EV. But I, I'm thinking about is Jax minus EV in a knockout. And eight, Ace King suited is super minus EV. Yep, that's what I said. Any unpaired hand is not a call. Yeah, I, I'm going to close it, um, Cichlids. That's why I'm waiting for this game to finish. If that's not small blind best big blind and it falls to him, Ace Queen is a shove, right? Of course. He he can push any two cards in the small blind. He was in the big blind in that hand, so I don't know if that that's not even possible that situation. Fine, yeah, I know. Finally we we're going deep in a 45 man, but I did lose that eights against sixes. If I won that hand, I'd have a huge chip lead. If I won that eights against, eights against sixes, we'd be in really good shape in this tournament, but we, we can't hold the 80-20. 
So what I'll do guys, I'll wait for this 45 to finish. Try and try and win it. Then I'm gonna quickly do the ICM calculation for this ace queen ace two hand, because everyone likes that hand. And then I'm gonna do this 45 man review. Um for who was it? Ake aesthetic. Ake aesthetic, I think it was. Uh, but I'll start halfway because it's a very long hand history. I'm not going to do 200 hands. Hey Gracie Bear, how you doing? Welcome, hope you're having a good day. Glad you like that hand. I actually think that, like, in a normal uh, nine man structure, Jax is a call, definitely, but in a knockout, Jax could even be a fold. Uh, so, I'd have to, like, to find out whether I call Jax or not, I'd have to run a knockout equity ICM calc uh, calculation, which I don't know how to do, because uh, I've only just started playing knockout, so I'd have to contact my friend Play SVK. but, like, we know that Ace-King is an easy fold, we know that Tens is an easy fold, so the question is, in a knockout, do we fold Jax as well? Um, I don't know, you know, we'll see. But... It's only one combination, it doesn't happen very often. Wait, what? Ultimately, he is out of the tournament. He can go for ICM, but Bounty doesn't factor in when he calls, only when he folds. Uh... He yeah, but the ICM calculation does include the percent when he folds. So like, I mean, the bounty, the, the future bounty equity is a factor. So having, having that be a bounty tournament does change his core range. That's just what I'm trying to say. Like, if you call the same range there in a bounty tournament than you do in a non-bounty tournament, you're making a mistake because the future bounty equity has value. Okay, here's more information. 1k, 3rd person, 7k, chip leader race, 1st person folds every time. What cards do I call? 2 person get money, turbo 6 max, blinds, 8160. I'm just gonna go all in with my short stack. Um, so you're in the big blind. Okay, uh, you're, you're small blind versus big blind. The chip leader's in the small blind, you're in the big blind. Uh, you have to call there pretty tight. Mecha, Mechan. I think, uh, like, ace five suited, ace six suited or better. The king, jack, king ten offsuit. Um, pairs, like, fives or better. Something like that. So around 15%. I don't have a graph. My graph randomizer is on uh, shark scope. You can just shark scope me, put in the date uh, when I started. I think it's like, I don't know, April 16th or something. It's in the challenge command, and the shark scope will have it. What's your buy in? It's up here, Gracie. This is a $7 game. Mental game is my biggest weakest and part and the part of my game I am working the hardest to fix. That's really good, Benji, because mental game is such a big part of online poker. And if you can get a really strong mental game, you'll be able to grind longer sessions and the swings won't affect you as much and you'll just you know, it's really, really good. So I'm glad to hear that you're doing that, working on your game. What do you think of spinning goes? I think they're profitable, they're fun, certainly a good game. Not my best game, but uh, definitely there's money in them. 
Type bankroll management does help a lot if you want to improve your mental game. Uh, just play lower, so the money doesn't affect you as much. Big good tip from Bambalook. <laughs> I do need a spin command, Benji. I get asked that a lot. So we're close to the bubble. Have to tighten up a little bit. Uh, wait, we're on the we're on the bubble. Only seven get paid, so we're on the bubble. Good luck in the one eighties, Bambalak. <laughs> Can't wait to bust the forty pounds and just can do the math to end this ace queen debacle. Well, um, Strongfold already did the math himself, but I mean, I'll, I'll show you guys how to do it, just so you know. Oh man, I actually think this is a fold on the bubble, because there's two shorter stacks, and we have 11 big blinds. Yeah, this is an easy fold, in my opinion, on the bubble. If it was not the bubble, in the money, let's say, I think that's a push. With five high. <laughs> yeah, is that possible to win with five high? I can think that I have to type my range because first place isn't worth as much in knockout as in normal. Um... Yeah, that's that's true as well, because other people take the, the bounties out of the prize pool, yeah. But I think that the bigger factor in that is just you, the loss of future bounty equity is more important than just getting chips, you know? Yep, there's my bank core management. On my phone at work, too small. <laughs> Alright, Gracie. Hope you have a good time at work. No worries. I haven't read Mental Game, no. I, I should definitely read that, though. That's a book that I should be reading. Strongfold has put it pretty perfectly. Sometimes you don't take slightly positive EV decision because of future uh, high EV decisions. The same can be applied to bounty equity. You fold so you can use your bounty equity later on. That's exactly true. And that's something that like ICM calculators don't calculate perfectly because they can't see like five or ten hands in the future, but you can. Still on the bubble, so still being tight. I'm back, welcome back Wang Zhang. And I have just finished catching up on the chat. So we're on the final table guys, we're on the bubble right now. After this we're going to do... Uh, that review from the hand earlier on the bubble. Queen 2 vs Ace Queen. And then we're going to do a review for a viewer ache aesthetic. 45 man review. We're just going to do 100 hands. For him. Alright, in the money now. In the money as a short stack, ace eight off. Let's go for eight big blinds. So if this was the bubble, I would not push this. But because we're in the money. And, I, and I'm the short stack. Got to get those chips, the blinds are going up. Unfortunately, I can't play this hand. I think even if the small blind pushes all in, it's a fold. Uh, so we just have to give this one up. Hope for a walk, but it didn't happen. So against the regular, I don't know if I can push this. 
against a regular. And he's Australian, so he must be good, right? Yeah, I, I want to read it, Benji, because it's it it would actually help me with things that I'm trying to do with esports. I'm trying to do that mental game kind of coaching. So I, I think I'm going to get the book for sure. Not only that, but like just in life in general, got good advice. I'm glad he raised because I didn't. I was. It was a very hard decision whether to shove seven nine off for uh, eight and a half big blinds against a regular. If he's tight, it's a push. But if he's calling perfectly, I think it's a fold. So it's really close. This is a fold. Alright. Oh, the American Aces. Play a few matches of Paso and then get back into the grind. That'd make me salty. Oh, we got the honeys. You got the queens. Come on, bros. I feel like trapping. <laughs> I feel like trapping because maybe that, maybe these guys think I'm just trying to take this guy out. I'm gonna do it. It's a weird play, but I think it works because it looks like I'm trying to uh, just play against the big blind, and I'm gonna fold to an all-in. Get it for free on Audible.com if you follow the referral link on his website. All right, thanks, Benji. I will. I'll check that out for sure. Thank you for the for the help. Well, the guy just called, so... Um, yeah, let's just get it in. I mean, I guess I can call and then try and induce more on the turn, but... How can he be bluffing here? I guess he might be bluffing. Uh, I think I just called to get more value from bluffs, because even if the turn is ace or king, I'm not folding. So I'm trying to get more value from bluffs. Maybe he has like an ace five and he bet bets. I want value, right? Hmm. I want him to bluff. I just want him to bluff River. Maybe he thinks I'm weak. I think I have to value shove. He doesn't have a 10 now. But he might call me with like... Ace-3 because he thinks I'm bluffing. Maybe he binked an 8. Definitely just gonna value shove. Good odds too. Rio, pretty good reg. Uh, thank you for the read. So now we're looking pretty. We're getting a decent stack, but we're still... Anything can happen, right? The, the blinds are high, everyone has a similar stack size, so it just takes one hand and we can beat the short stack again. Ace Jack. I am going to favorite that Jared Tendler link. Thank you, uh, Benji. Definitely need to read that book.
So we know this guy's a decent reg, but I mean, his sizing needs work. <laughs> Don't know why he's raising more than 2x. But whatever. Not going to push 4-6 against another regular, it's just unprofitable. He's calling correctly. Against a tight player, you can push any two cards, but not against a fellow Australian regular. I love AJ. 1-2. I hope AJ is a person and not Ace Jack, because no one likes Ace Jack. Everyone hates that hand. So, if folded, I think I can shove for 11 big blinds with the Jack Knight offsuit on the button, but Rio does not let us shove. Thanks, Yabio, for the kind words. Glad you're here in the chat. Welcome. Of course. Gonna push all in with the fours if he folds. Pairing the cutoff is pretty strong with 11 big blinds. Even twos I would shove here. Any ace, any pair, any broadway, any high suited connector, even like king seven suited is a push. Hoping that we're flipping now that we get called. And that we are in pretty big trouble. Four? Nope. His call is pretty good. I like it. Uh, just running into another pair, it's unlucky. Now we're short. He did tank there, like, I don't know if he was thinking about folding, because that seemed like a pretty easy call, uh, in my opinion. Maybe he's just playing a lot of tables. I don't usually one table, guys, but we are trying to do this ICM calculation after this game, so I need to wind down to close PokerStars while I do the calculation. Hopefully we're ahead. Or flipping. Ugh, ace. Um, yeah, alright, well, pretty unlucky. That's alright. So I'll stop the music, close Poker Stars quickly while I do this calculation. Alright, so here's the hand. Just so you guys know. It's the bubble of a 9-man turbo knockout structure, two short stacks, I'm the huge chip leader, blind versus blind against the second place. Alright, folds to me, pushing with any two cards, very profitable, and he calls ace-queen. Now we do the calculation. Okay, let's get the hand history. Open up Holden Manager, uh, sorry, Holden Resources Calculator, which is the one that I use. But ICMizer will do the same thing, so we'll see and go wizard. They're all basically the same. Okay. Do I import this? I forget how to do it. I haven't done this in a while, guys. Uh, maybe I just go. Ace from clipboard. ICM. Payouts 50, 30, 20, but this payout structure does not factor the future bounty knockout. So this is, we're just doing this calculation as if it's a normal uh, turbo. Wait, why is that not doing the blinds correctly? Oops. Yeah, I don't know why. I have to do the stacks manually, I guess. Which is fine. So we'll do the stacks manually. 50, 30, 20. So, alright, let's just move this over here. So it's blind level 200. God damn it. I'll just import it. I think it's easier. 
think it's this game. Uh, nope, different game. Okay, this is the hand. Make sure you guys can see that. Alright, here we go. So the stacks are in now. We've got the blind, the payout structure, the blinds, the antis in, ICM. It's doing its calculation down here. Alright, here we go. So it's done the ICM calculation, factoring all those things that I said on stream. Um, how often is the guy going to win with Ace Queen to uh, mean that he'll win more dollars um, in the long run compared to those chances that he just loses and, and busts out? In, on the bubble when he's comfortably in second place. So the ca the calculation says that any two cards in the small blind is very profitable. Even 3-2 offsuit will win you 6.7% um, of the prize pool, which is enormous. Very, very plus EV push. Like anything in sin goes, which is plus 0.1 is, is decent. So when you get plus 0.6, that's enormous plus EV push. Like I said, very plus EV. And tens is basically break even. So slight tens is a slight winner. Ace Queen offsuit is minus three, which is a horrendously bad call. Even Ace King will lose you a lot of money in the long run calling. Um, so tens is break even. I would fold tens because I don't want to make this call in a knockout structure. Basically break even because you have that future value of the bounties against the short stacks when you're second. So I believe tens is also a call in a knockout structure, but even in a non-knockout structure, I would also fold tens because I believe my edge on the bubble outweighs a very marginal call. But jacks in a normal structure game is an easy call. Plus one is a is a good plus EV call. But I'm not sure in a knockout structure if this is going to be good enough uh, factoring in future bounties. I suspect Plus one is really good, so it probably will still be a call in a knockout, but this is proof, guys. These are the only hands you can call in the big blind in that situation. Aces, kings, queens, and jacks. Proof. Done. Alright. Moving on.